back to Fresno, loser! Hey, meet me in Sepulveda Boulevard tonight, Culver City. I'm gonna sell this once and for all, goddammit. I'll be there! Hey, you better be there, asshole! My name is Franco Leary. I play Fresno. Um, the real name of the character was Tony Cruciato. Uh, I come in late in the film. Uh, I basically play, I want to say the villain, but it's not necessarily a villain. You're not supposed to hate him, but he is the antagonist of the story towards the end. He's sort of the most important because it comes at such a crucial moment in the film. Um, and you might gather from seeing him, uh, he comes from a certain background. He seems kind of hot-headed and, you know, loudmouth and, and full of himself. But what you don't see is that behind the lines, uh, where he comes from, you know, he has a lot riding on this. It's, it's a pretty desperate situation for him. He's, everything's riding on this. This is what his life is built up to, you know. To Fresno, it's life or death. This is it. This is, the stakes are as high as they get, and he's trying to step up to the challenge. And, He's facing that reality. Um, it's a very dangerous reality. He uh, he doesn't know what the outcome is going to be. I mean, he believes and he's confident that he's going to beat Johnny, but there's no guarantee of that. Tommy sent us. He wanted to warn you. There's a new cat with a mean heap at Saugus. He's looking for you. He's been laying rubber all over town telling everybody he's gonna cream you. He's got the fastest hot rod in Fresno. He goes into a town where nobody knows him. And the only reputation he has is everyone dislikes him because he's a loud mouth and he, you know, he's a hothead and he thinks he can be everybody's hero. You know, and, and Johnny is his hero too. He looks up to him and, he, and I don't think he meant to be his enemy or his opposition, I think only he looked up to him and wanted to be the best. And he wanted to be the best and he wanted to be like Johnny. But I think, you know, just circumstances played out that they butted heads and things got escalated. Uh, but I don't think that was his intention. I think he really looked up to Johnny and he was sort of a hero to him. Well, this being my first movie set, uh, man, everything was new, everything was exciting, everything was just interesting. Uh, got to learn, you know, what it means to look behind a camera, see the frame, what you're really doing, and the interaction between the castmates and the director and, and us, and everyone helping, everyone just came together. It was very much like a family, and I loved being on set, it was very exciting. So, how did it feel? Amazing. It's gonna feel even better right now. Someone jumping in? It was wonderful. The locations we shot at were just out of this world. It was a blast. We go out to the dry lake and seeing the stars at night, and and then all the perks, of course. You know, driving in that red roadster. And just so cool. It was from 1929, and it, just driving across the dry lake. And who gets to say they can do something like that? But for some reason, we always had, you know first-class stuff you know we got the best cars and best outfits and I thought we had great actors and I learned a lot from them uh, most of all I think uh, just being on set in a movie like this you see it grow and seeing it grow the way it did going from scene to scene you really get involved and you really start caring about the other people around you and you'll find yourself holding the mic for a scene or you'll be behind the camera watching your rushes or even someone else's rushes and you want them to nail the scene more than you want yourself to. And uh, I think we captured something special in this film that doesn't get captured a lot and I think is rare. Um, and I'll always take that home with me. The memories that I had I think is very, very special. This project as a whole has always been all about the heart. It's always been about pulling together, I guess, as a family. I mean, I guess maybe that's not the plot, but behind the scenes it was, I'll hold the mic or somebody else will hold the mic for my scene or we'll all work on the lighting. I mean, no one was ever without a purpose. 
even if you weren't in front of the camera. And I thought that was special. If you come together sort of in a family type atmosphere, the results, you know, shine through so much better than if you take it as a cold, hard business. You know, keeping that family, that warmth, eating together, <laughs> cooking each other food, joking around, being in extreme weathers, which were just the worst. You either go from hot as you can get and handle, you drink, you know, gallons of water a day to freezing cold at four o'clock in the morning when it's windy, you know, just trying to get the perfect scene together. And that's just something I'll take together. It's just the intangibles, the things that people don't see that happen behind the, behind the scenes. I think that was the biggest thing for me. And to see the community around us uh, donating vintage cars, it's fairly incredible. Uh, to see that, to have everyone just volunteer themselves. And, and I think that's partly because they understood as well as anyone else in the cast that, you know, this is something special. This is, this is a special film and they need to be a part of it because they might not understand why, but they know at the end it's gonna be significant and they'll always have that memory. If I never do anything else in my career, I know I have this and it'll be there forever because you can't take it away. So definitely appreciative of the opportunity that I was given and I would do it again in a minute.